Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and on this channel we don't often talk about aliens. But when we do, it's possibly aliens? Let's talk about this new exciting study I just recently discovered, and welcome to What The Math. Now I think most of you are probably familiar with so-called SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Institute. It's been around for quite a while and it has a lot of different programs going, but its main purpose is to try to discover extraterrestrial intelligence somewhere out there in space. And SETI is not just trying to find alien life. This organization is really trying to find intelligence somewhere out there in space and it's used a lot of different techniques to try to discover if someone out there is trying to communicate with us or if anyone is trying to listen to our communication as well. Now, in one of the videos I made last year, I mentioned one of the previous studies that discovered that, well, it seems that no one is trying to talk to us. It seems that no communication is coming from anywhere. In other words, the study suggested that there might be no extraterrestrial intelligence, at least from all of the data we've collected so far. But there is a bit of hope in trying to discover what's going on, and this hope is coming from the study that was just recently published that you can also find in the description below. This study is based on observations of various stars and trying to identify any changes in those stars in the last um, few decades. Now, more specifically, this study actually began back in 2016 when the scientists from Sweden discovered that when trying to compare the images of the night skies that were taken back in 1950s with the images that were taken today, there was at least one star kind of missing, as if it just disappeared. The original data from the 1950s came from one of the biggest observatories back then, the United States Naval Observatory. This beautiful observatory was actually in the forefront of trying to look at the night skies and um, back then it was actually used for mostly navigation reasons but it also had a scientific component as well. So this was one of the top observatories but because it was built in the urban area eventually it became very difficult for scientists to use this place because there was just too much light pollution and other observatories were much much better at looking at the night skies. Nevertheless, even today it's known for its huge collection of atomic clocks and also the biggest astronomy library in the United States and one of the biggest collection of astronomy related studies in the entire world. So it's a very important place. And back in 1950s and also basically until very recently, the observatory was creating these night catalogs of the entire night skies and um, they were very detailed and were also used in a lot of different studies as well as of course for uh, naval use by the United States Navy. But when the scientists behind the 2016 paper compared the 1950 um, observation with some of the more recent ones, they realized there was at least one star sort of missing from the picture as if it just vanished. Now this wasn't really a big deal back then, but now they published a follow-up observation of other stars they've discovered. In this new follow-up, they discovered approximately 100 different stars that disappeared over the last few decades. Now, what do we mean by disappeared? Well, imagine looking at the night skies and basically recording all of the data and collecting all of the star information, and suddenly, when you look at it a few years later, one of the stars just disappears. It's no longer there with no explosions, no uh, appearance of any kind of black hole formation or neutron star formation, and no other signs. But what does this have to do with aliens? Well, it might have nothing to do with aliens, or it might imply that something is going on in this region of space. More specifically, of course, it could be the signs of a very advanced civilization creating what's known as Dyson Spheres. These huge formations around a star to try to harness as much energy as possible. Now this is the most eccentric explanation to what's happening and this is actually probably the least likely right now. But because these scientists were able to discover 100 disappearing stars, it creates a mystery that definitely needs to be investigated. Simply because it's either a phenomenon we've never observed before and we can't really explain right now, or it could imply that in that particular region of space, there might be a very advanced civilization building these huge shells around stars that eventually turn these stars into these very efficient energy batteries that produce a lot of energy for this civilization, but make them invisible to everyone else in the galaxy. 
And even though humanity currently theoretically understands how one would form something similar to the so-called Dyson Sphere that covers the entire star and produces energy by capturing it directly from the Sun, we are far from being able to create this ourselves and the difficulties and in engineering challenges involved here are just beyond what humanity is capable of right now. This however is one of the explanations for how these stars might have vanished. The other explanation is actually um, a lot more likely but a lot less exciting. So if these stars were for example what's known as flare stars, it's very very possible that when the original pictures were taken, the star actually experienced a tremendously powerful flare that made it extremely bright, like much brighter than even what you see here. And then when we took a picture the second time, it was just much quieter and practically invisible to um, a typical telescope. We would need to use a much more powerful telescope to see if the star is still here. So these M-type super flares are actually one of the more likely explanations, but there needs to be a lot of follow-up to discover what's going on. On the other hand, these events could also be similar to what's known as Red Luminous Nova, or basically a very unusual supernova that are not really typical and are not easily explained. In other words, once again, this was a sudden brightening of the object for one reason or another that was not initially explained or even detected, and now the star is just a lot more difficult to see because it's naturally dim compared to what it was when the original picture was taken. Just to give you a visual analogy of what might have happened here, you have a bunch of stars. Some of these stars might have suddenly become really, really bright. This is when we took the original picture. And then when the follow-up pictures were taken decades later, none of this was visible anymore. Essentially, these were some temporary events that very likely brightened the star in some dramatic way, possibly an unusual type of a supernova or nova. And now the stars are just not very visible. Once again, to try to discover if this is what happened, we have to use more additional observations using more powerful telescopes to try to see what really happened in those specific spots that were identified by this team. And obviously there could be other natural explanations for what we're observing and how these stars are disappearing and no, are no longer visible to us. But leaving this as a natural explanation is not really what SETI is about. I'm very certain that some of the follow-up studies from SETI would definitely address this and try to resolve exactly what's happening to these stars and why they're no longer there or at least appear not to be there. Which is of course why I'm going to follow this up with another video sometime in the future. For now, that's really unfortunately all we know. We know that some stars seem to have disappeared and some scientists think that maybe it's aliens. Because you know, maybe they built a huge Dyson sphere and the stars are just no longer visible. But that's just a speculation. We'll find out in the near future. On that note, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and potentially support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye-bye.